Hey guys, it is your girl Nat here. This is the long-awaited Rhino tutorial and I do want to kick off the video saying that for this video I have partnered with Dell Technologies. Today I really wanted to go into detail about how to model things in Rhino 6 slash Rhino 7. This is just an introductory video and I just hope that by the end of this video you are better acquainted with such a powerful software like Rhino. So without further ado, do, let's just get right into it. Now, if you guys don't know what Rhino is, Rhino is a common software used in architecture schools. For the most part, every single NAAB certified architecture school will use powerful softwares like Rhino 6. You will need a powerful laptop to do so. So that's where Dell comes in for sure, but more on that later. Back to Rhino 6, you have the option to do NURBS modeling, mesh modeling. You could render, you could do quick animations. It's just this great dynamic software that allows you to do multiple, multiple things all in just one program. I could do a mesh model, which is super organic and fluid and export that to be 3D printed. Or I could just do a complete NURBS building completely in Rhino and extract floor plans from that. So today's video, I wanted to kind of give you an overview of Rhino as a software, but also kind of break down critical key commands that maybe you know, maybe you don't. So first things first, you have to get the software. Just head over to McNeil's website. They do offer a completely free trial. Download the Rhino 7 trial for your new Windows computer. As Rhino 6 is downloading, I did want to talk to you more about Dell Technologies, specifically my Dell Precision 5560 mobile workstation. Dell Technologies helps organizations and individuals build their digital future. This Precision line is high performing, allowing powerful applications like CAD and Adobe to work seamlessly due to NVIDIA RTX A2000 graphics with four gigabytes of memory. This Dell Precision workstation definitely is top of the line and allows me to get my best work done. They have been the leader in workstations for the past two decades. As an emerging professional in such a creative industry, I knew for a fact I would need a powerful workstation and this Dell Precision laptop provides everything that I need. We're all aware as emerging architects or licensed architects and other creative fields out there, we need that powerful graphics card, that powerful processor. So on my mobile workstation, I have a Xeon processor. So the Xeon processors are qualified to handle heavier, more intensive loads day in and day out, which is perfect for architecture. My Precision workstation has 64 gigabytes of installed RAM two terabytes of storage, the NVIDIA RTX A2000 GPU, and operates on Windows 10 Pro. Now, because architecture demands a high-end workstation PC for CAD drawings, the Dell Precision 5560 checks off all the boxes. The Precision line is the world's thinnest 15-inch mobile workstation, and you don't have to sacrifice any power that you need for the aesthetics either. It really is such a beautiful laptop, and the sleekness of it all is so amazing. All of these professional level components have been ISV certified. This means it is so compatible with these challenging heavy lifting softwares like Adobe Creative Cloud, Rhino, which we're going into, rendering, ray tracing. Furthermore, it also features and integrates an AI software, which will help create personalized suggestions, improve your workflow. Long story short, it's the perfect workstation it has the powerful capability to drive emerging technologies such as AR, VR, AI workloads, which is actually very common and definitely emerging in our field of architecture, right? All of these reasons and more is why I am so excited to have partnered with Dell Technologies. So our friends at Dell would be more than happy to help you configure your perfect precision PC. Just click the link down below in my bio to get started. So now let me introduce you to Rhino. At the top, you will see uh, file, edit, view, and so on. These menus group Rhino commands by function. Underneath that, 
you see history of previously executed commands. Next, you see a command prompt. You are able to type in command names and select options here. Lastly, underneath the command prompt, there is an extensive toolbar. If you are curious about a tool operation, a tool tip will appear when you just hover your mouse over it. Your toolbar is also conveniently located on the left side of the viewport. In the middle of the screen, by default, there will be four viewports displaying your Rhino environment. The left-hand side of the program shows various panels containing layers, properties, and other settings. You can click the settings cog wheel to toggle on and off certain properties. Lastly, on the bottom, there is the status bar and it shows the coordinate system and system units. One thing I do encourage you guys to actually toggle on is your gumball gives you the capability to click and drag things using the red, green, and blue arrows and also rotate them. So now let's talk about changing the unit. So you're going to go up to file properties and then you'll see the unit. So if you're working in a smaller model space, maybe inches work or millimeters work, typically in architecture school, you're designing buildings. So that's why I always work in feet. Now there are going to be multiple ways to do the same thing. So let's draw a line. So I clicked on that line command, drew it. I can duplicate that line or I could go up to that command bar, type in the word line, and there you go. I have my other line. Now here you can see in the screen recordings that that white line, that white guideline shows up. And that is because I have my snaps on. And like I mentioned, my snaps are located on the bottom bar. And I highly recommend for everyone to turn this on ASAP. It is so important that this is on. Another good thing to know is that at the bottom here you can see that you have your snaps and I highly recommend putting your snaps on and what this means is that all of your geometry is actually going to be connected or intersecting at one specific point Point. All right, let's get back to drawing in Rhino. So I'm just gonna use the box command here and extrude a basic box. I'm going to play around with how I visualize this though as I'm working. So this is the ray trace mode, but I'm actually gonna switch it over to the shaded mode. And a great command to also know is called dupe edge. And all of the edges of my box are going to be converted into a line. So Rhino is really this wonderful translation between 2D to 3D elements. So just making sure you know how to do that with the proper commands is super important. And obviously the longer you work in Rhino, the more comfortable and more knowledgeable you'll be about Rhino commands. So I know this is overwhelming, but just don't be too stressed guys. So at the top here, you can see I have four individual lines. If I wanted to join them, I will just type in the command prompt join. And there you go, you have a square. Click on that blue part of that gumball arrow. It will extrude the lines as a surface. I then type in cap and there we go. We have a rectangle that we started with for the most part. Now I also want to talk about sweeps. This is another great way to create surfaces and you can also have doubly curved surfaces. So this is more advanced I would say. So sweeps are great if you want a more organic form and you just create two separate curves. You join them with one curve and you sweep. There's sweep one and sweep two, meaning you have two separate rails or not. And actually here I did use a loft command. So you could use multiple commands to get the same result. Here you can see I just used a surface edge command that allowed me to close my geometry. Now, what about other 3D geometry? Honestly, the world is your oyster in Rhino. <laughs> so you can start off with a bunch of basic shapes, cylinders, pyramids, cones, spheres, and adjust it. Boolean union, which means you're gonna join multiple 3D elements together. You could Boolean difference, meaning you'll subtract it from each other. Boolean split will keep the difference instead of completely removing it. So sometimes that's a good way to model, or you could start out with just lines and surfaces. So here I'm gonna draw a bunch of cubes, and what I'm gonna do next is Boolean union both of these geometries, and they will become one. And you can really start to see interesting relationships and create little complexities just from using basic shapes. So I highly recommend for you to play around in Rhino. 
merge all faces and merge all coplanar faces. We'll just keep everything nice and clean. That's a common command I use a lot. Here I just reuse that duplicate edge command just to get the line work for that down. I think it looks great, it looks great. All right, so we're gonna repeat a couple steps here. So I'm gonna click the box command on the left hand panel. I'm going to specify that I want this height to actually be 120 feet and I can just type that into the command prompt and that is my boundary. And then here you can see my site for studio for this semester and I'm gonna work on a little massing with you guys. Starting off, I'm gonna create another box actually, plan. And the thing with the multiple viewports is that you can play around in the top view, left view, right view, back view, all that good stuff. I just made a simple uh, box and uh, used the move command, attached it from the vertex, and then I can copy it or array it. Here I am scaling back, providing a setback for that bottom block. And you do that typing the command scale 1D. You could also use scale 2D and that'll mean that it'll translate in two directions. You could scale up uniformly and I typically scale up and scale down when I am scaling something to be 3D printed. And this model, for instance, was 1 40th. So I drew a 40 foot line. And then when you press scale, you just make that line equal one inch. So we covered a lot so far. We covered lines, planes, surfaces, scaling, sweeping, lofting, all that good stuff. Another great tool to know is clipping planes. When your file gets big, like the site model, for instance, a clipping plane will allow you to crop the view. And this is great too, especially if you're working on a section drawing in Rhino. That way you can just crop the view, see the insides and the inner workings of your Rhino geometry that you've modeled so far. So all you do is type in clipping plane. You can use multiple if you are not seeing the clipping plane quote working in your viewport. Just head over to the properties panel on the right hand side and click on the clipping plane options directly under the properties panel. You would check the box that makes the clipping plane active in your view. I now have this super simple geometry right here. Now this is a NURBS geometry and I could easily just select this and type in mesh. And it's gonna give me this little dialog box which allows me to make more polygons or fewer. I typically go fewer or in the center and then I can click my gumball drag it over and I have a mesh and I have a typical NURBS model. Working with meshes is always a really fun opportunity for you to get a more blended organic form. So for instance here I'm going to put a bunch of these spheres together. After I put these spheres together I'm going to boolean union them and I'm going to mesh this object right now. There's a great command and it's called rebuild mesh and simplify mesh. And when you rebuild your mesh, you have the ability to just limit the amount of components the mesh has. So it really just simplifies everything and as a result you get a very cool figure. So like I mentioned before, Rhino is all about this fluid translation from line to surface to, to poly surfaces to extruded objects to mesh to mesh to nerves. <laughs> it's it's just this wonderful arrangement and harmony of all of these things. And then another great feature that I, I discovered way too late in the game, it is a selection filter. So I'm gonna draw a line really quickly, that way you guys can understand what I mean. Press selection filter, and what's gonna happen is this little pop-up's gonna show up and I can click what kind of objects I want. So if I only want control points, meaning that when I draw a line and there's two control points anchored that line, that geometry in place, I could only select that. If I want to select a poly surface, meaning that it's made up of multiple single surfaces, I can only select that. So that's a really great tool and feature of Rhino 6 and Rhino 7 that I highly recommend. Yeah, so that's the basics of Rhino. I didn't want this to get too lengthy, but as always, leave me a question down below. Keep on the lookout because in a couple of weeks, I'm going to be releasing a Revit tutorial and I am also going to be doing a rendering tutorial introduction to rendering also featuring ray tracing which once again this precision line laptop can handle with ease thank you so much for tuning in and keep on the lookout for my Revit tutorial being released soon